I don't think I have ever in my life needed to shovel down to my front step before. That that was kind of fun. This is what a desolate Arctic wasteland would look like. This is good writing material right here. This is unfortunately also what I'm about to need to clean off for the next 20 minutes. That railing that you can see there, that's four and a half feet tall. And what you can see is about a foot. And this is the fourth time that we've shoveled this off today. Please note the height of the snow on both sides. It is above the height of my steps, which in fact makes it um, above my waist. That is a five foot fence, which is filled most of the way up. That is a four and a half foot fence that you can now see less than a foot of. And everything is covered in white stuff. You can see it's still coming down pretty heavily. And at this point, we're supposed to still have about six hours more coming. So, yeah, good times. I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna shoot an author's blog now. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go get warm. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's blog. As you can see, the weather outside is actually pretty frightful. So, we're going to go on with something hopefully more delightful. I know I've been talking to you about my Twitter successes. I said last week that I had doubled from 500 to 1,000 people in the week. And this week I've gone from 1,000 to just shy of 1,750, over 1,700. So, you know, almost 750 people this week. I'm confident that what I'm doing is something that if it can't fix your Twitter problems, will at least help them. So I'm going to start to cue you guys in on what I'm doing. What I'm going to cover today, though, is the kind of people you want on your Twitter feed rather than how to get them. We're going to do that one next week. Right now, we're going to focus on the people that can actually make an impact on your account, which is the kind of people that you want sitting on your Twitter feed. These are going to be people that either are going to respond favorably, are going to help share your successes, or else are going to be business opportunities for you later on. Before I go into that, I just want to thank some of the people that are on my Twitter feed, because you guys are awesome. I'm going to start off with my retweets, uh, my retweet kings and queens for the week. These are the people that have retweeted the things that I've put up the most during this past week. Uh, and that's going to start with Geronimo Bosch. Geronimo Bosch. I mean, please, please let that be a real name and not just a handle because that's a freaking awesome name. And I need to get in contact with Geronimo Bosch and find out if I can use that sometime written somewhere. I don't even care where. I just want somebody to know somebody named Geronimo Bosch and have to say the name. Um, other than that, I've got Reggie Wade, PJ Sterling, and uh, Tyler Wanschneider who I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right. I think I am. We've never discussed this part, even though we talk a lot. So, yeah, Tyler. Eh? 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 I don't know. Let me know. Um, but, yeah, these guys have been on top of everything that I've been sending out. They've responded a lot, which is really helpful, both for my account and theirs. The more people see retweets, the more they see activity, and that's going to draw people to your account. So what you want to do is when you find the kind of people you want to be communicating with, you want to make sure you're retweeting their stuff as well as you can also. As far as just liking my posts, because that also helps with availability, um, Juliana has been top-notch. Writes, which is the nor the normal word writes with a Y instead of an I. Really good. Uh, again, PJ and Tyler are on that list. Uh, Emma's, uh, Emily Machiard, 
And again, and I hope I'm getting this one right, because if not, she'll just charge me more when I have her do artwork for me. Uh, Brad Ward, Jenna Marici, Dr. Ish-ism, which is another great one. That was cool. I like that. And Brian Converse. These guys have liked a lot of stuff. That helps a lot. I really appreciate it. And the more you guys keep going up, the easier it is for me to put up stuff that you're going to like. So that really works. Now, as far as the kind of people you want on your Twitter account, easy to buy likes and it's easy to get your account blown up stupid big and have everybody you could possibly need on there and guess what that doesn't actually help you first because if you have a bunch of dead weight on your account they're not liking they're not retweeting they're not spreading the word about your brand and that's what you're on Twitter to do basically what I've done is I've broken down the five types of people you want to have on your account that are going to help you to maximize what you're doing or be useful to you later. Either one is good. It's just a good resource to be able to keep them there this way. Uh, the first one are going to be other writers. Other writers, obviously, they're going to be your brothers and sisters. They're going to feel your pain. They're going to share your joys. They're going to be happy for you, hopefully, when you're successful, and there for you, hopefully, when you're not. So by having other writers on there, you guys can communicate. Also, this keeps us better informed. There's a lot going on right now, especially with some of the changes that Amazon is making. And if you're up with other writers, you can find out about these faster. You can also find out about different networking opportunities, different events that are available. So having writers that are on your feed, definitely beneficial for you. Second off is going to be readers. <clears throat> this one's kind of a no-brainer, but I've broken it down into two different sections. You've got your professional readers, which are your bloggers or book reviewers. Good to have a list of these people around because sooner or later, you know, when you're done screwing around on Twitter and Facebook, you're actually going to have a manuscript that somebody's going to need to read. And when you do, you're going to want to get it to people that are going to be able to tell you that it's good and tell other people that it's good. That's the whole reason why you're trying to market yourself. So by having a list ready of book reviewers and bloggers, when you're ready to take that next step with your project, they're right there. It's organized. It's right in front of you. And you can even make a list right in Twitter that just says book reviewers and drop them all in there. Not, not that tough to do on that one. Uh, second group of readers is going to be what I call regular readers or amateur readers. And these are your guys and girls that read books because they like to read books. I mean, that's kind of how we all started, right? So these are people that aren't going to be able to help you by blogging your book. They're not going to be helping you by getting your word out more. But this is going to be your pool that you're going to go to for beta testers. This is going to be the pool that you go to for your customers. So you definitely want to have them on there because these are going to be your dynamic go-getters, your street team, the people that you communicate with regularly that are going to be able to help you to get the word out when your project's done. If they're in Twitter, you already have them organized. Again, you can make a list of them, and then they're easy to find, and you're ready to go. Uh, so those are going to be your two top ones that you're going to want to interact with most directly. These are also the ones that are probably going to give you your most retweets, your most likes, so that's going to be your cream of the crop. Um, as we go farther down the pyramid, your next group of uh, sites that you're going to have on is going to be marketing sites. Now, this is also going to be not only marketing sites for Twitter or Facebook or any of your other social media, but also marketing sites for books, uh, book bound, book reader, book whatever other word they want to put after it is pretty much how you're going to notice these guys. Again, keep them here in a list because... These are all of those marketing opportunities and people that can spread word about your book and can advertise your book that when you come out with your book, you're always like, oh my God, I don't know where I can advertise my book. I don't know what anybody's rates are. I don't know who's been doing well. Guess what? If you've got a group of these on your Twitter page, you know who's connecting to their readers. You know who's sending out the most notices and you know who's doing it the best because you're seeing them. Again, you put them all in a list, they're bright, they're easy, they're labeled. When your manuscript's ready to go and you've got your book out and you're in your pre-sale page, you can go to these groups and go, hey, here you go, guys, do your thing. So having them organized on your Twitter page ahead of time is just going to help you in the long run. Um, number four is going to be editors and manufacturers. 
not necessarily a place that you're going to get a lot of depth as far as future work for your books. Not a place you're going to get a lot of depth as far as tweets and relikes. But these are some contacts you want to keep lukewarm. Let's say your regular editor disappears, has too much work, starts charging double, whatever. If you have a list of potential editing sites, you're going to be able to make this work a lot faster if you need to replace somebody because you've got a list of opportunities. You've got some bench strength that you can go to that's going to help you otherwise. And again, these guys are people that need to have business and contact with writers. So making some contacts with them isn't a bad idea. It's in their best interest to follow you. It's in their best interest to retweet you and like your stuff. So you're going to get a little bit of play from them too. Not as much as from your readers or your writers, but if you notice that there's an editor that's constantly refreshing your page, constantly drawing more interest to it, that's an editor that's going to help you if you need work done because obviously they've already taken interest in your career. Uh, same with manufacturing sites. Uh, this would be places that you can get books done, uh, places where you can get covers from, other things like that. Again, not a lot of follow back, but a good list to already have on hand in case you need something. I mean, most of us are going to go to one of four places to get books printed, but let's say somebody else is new on the market. Keep an eye on them. Maybe you'll get a little bit more connection from them. And maybe, if it's a small outfit, they might remember the people that would contacted them first, and that can get you an in. So, definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, other than that, uh, the last group is going to be what I call flare pages. And you want to kind of keep these generic, uh, or sorry, genre specific, uh, which is oddly enough the exact opposite of the word I just said. These flare sites are going to be things that make sense for the genre that you normally write in. It's another place where you can market to. It's another place where you can show shared interest. For example, if you're normally writing horror books or mysteries, you might want to have some crime interest locations. Uh, if you're normally writing supernatural horror, you might want to have some good goth sites or some good cosplay organizations. If you're normally writing sci-fi of any genre, you might want to have, you know, NASA and DARPA or a bunch of other organizations that are made up of letters that substitute for words because these are people that are normally involved in that kind of a setting. So by having them on your site, it shows depth, it shows growth, and you might see something that might be used as a trigger for you as a writer. You never know. These five groups are going to be where you want the majority of your followers to be. Yes, you can put the local pizzeria joint because you know what? They might be a fan of yours and you might know the owner even though they're not necessarily a reader. They obviously have nothing else that can be done marketing-wise, but you're friendly. You already know them. There's no reason not to have them on there. You want to try to keep this as clean cut and streamlined as possible because you don't just want to have a million followers. You want to have a million active followers. These groups are going to be active. John's clothing store down the street is not going to be active about your sci-fi book. Or if he is, I'm actually going to be kind of afraid. By following this system, you're going to be able to get these people together, keep them linked, keep your Twitter account going forward, and really focus down on what's going to get you the most impact on your feed. So keep that in mind next week when I try to tell you how to get all of these people on your account. We're going to cover that next week because I didn't want to do like a 30 minute video and I'm probably already over this seven to eight minutes I try to aim for. I apologize, but this was a lot of good information that I hope is going to help people out a lot. Do me a favor. If you have anything to add, questions, comments, drop them down below. If I missed anything, if there's anything you want to see me try to revise a little bit, let me know. Other than that, everybody have a great week. Keep reading, keep writing, and I'll catch you next weekend.